I started to get some results, people would say to me, okay, like, what are you doing? If nothing changes, it's not a sign of weakness to hire a coach. It's a sign of, I can do this, but I didn't. We all need a little help along the way, don't we? All right. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the Fit Vegan Podcast. We are here with another Fit Vegan success story with one of our superstars, Beth Bryan. All right, welcome to the Fit Vegan Podcast. I'm your show host, Maxim Seguin, and I'm the founder and CEO of Fit Vegan Coaching, a company that is on a mission to help 10,000 people get lean, thrive, and reduce their risk of chronic illnesses by 2033 and a million by 2050. I believe that having a fit, healthy body and mind is the foundation to living an incredible life, and this is what little show will give you if you choose to listen and implement. Enjoy the episode and have a great day. Beth, how are you doing today? Great, Maxim. How are you? I'm doing great. Such a rock star name, <laughs> Beth Bryan. It feels like you'd be singing like a country singer somewhere. <laughs> you don't want me to sing, trust me. Uh, no? Do you like country? Country I music? Do. Yeah, sure. Nice. Awesome. Yeah, you just sound like you have like a, a rock star name for like the country <laughs> space. So, um, Beth, today we're going to be talking about your journey, your transformation. You sent me some update photos, I think, last week as you we were preparing for this recording. Just incredible before and after. Um, so far together, we've lost 15 pounds since you started. And I know you still have one more month in the program to, to hit that goal of 16 pounds. Right. We're pretty confident we're going to hit it, you know, a pound <laughs> in, in the next month. But so. I think the first photo you sent me was from before the program. So like how, how much have you lost so far? Well, the first photo I sent you was... Um a couple of days before I started the program, actually. And then, um, but the, my starting weight, somehow my withing scale had recorded my weight when I was just trying to play around with it, the darn yeah. thing. And so it's about 15.5 pounds now, total, I okay. would say. Nice. Oh, wow. Okay. So I thought the first photo that you sent me when you did your before and after was from like way before. That's from like before the program. That's a huge No, it was difference. just right before I started. I When I was supposed to upload my photos, that was May 20th, I want to say. So. Oh, shit. Okay. Because I have members send me photos. They're like, look at me six years ago, what I look like and look at oh. me now. And honestly, when you sent me that, I thought that was a photo from you last year. Because oh, I didn't go on your profile to see your first set. I was like, holy shit, that's a huge difference. But dang, that's from like the past three months of working together. Yeah, yeah, 11 and a half weeks ago, yeah. Yeah, and you've been working with uh, Coach Sarah. I have, I just love her, yes. Yeah, she's the best. And damn, I'm shit. I'm shocked by your transformation. I literally thought that that was your photo from like a year ago. That's oh. crazy. For the people on YouTube, we'll put it up on the screen so so you can see it. But yeah, huge oh. difference. <laughs> Um, so yeah, let, let's, let's jump into this. Like what made you want to take on this, um, let's be honest, challenging, scary journey to want to change your nutrition and kind of change your level of activity. Okay. Well, I'll give you kind of a long preamble to kind of tee it up. And then I think it'll make sense going forward if that's okay. Um, let's do it. It's a podcast. We can talk for hours. Podcast, right. Well, I'm a recently retired orthopedic physical therapist. And my husband and I have two grown daughters and two wonderful son-in-laws and six grandbabies ages eight years to eight months. And they're the light of my life. And we also have um, two rescue dogs, Kobe and Wrigley. And I am praying that we don't hear from them during the podcast, <laughs> that the FedEx guy doesn't come by or something. But my whole journey actually started decades ago, Maxim. And and as a physical therapist, um, you need so many continuing education hours per biennium. And so yeah. I had gone to Chicago to a CEU course, and it was a lot of cadaver. Now, that might sound kind of gross to some people, but my undergrad and my first round of graduate work, I had done a lot of cadaver work. So, And God bless those people who donate their bodies to science, right? Yeah. But, I mean, my point was it was nothing different than what I was used to, nothing at all. But about halfway into the thing, it was like someone flipped a switch in the back of my head. And it was just like, when I eat meat, I'm eating somebody's muscle. And that's what I work with all day. And yes. I was just like, oh, you know, and the sad truth is a lot of people will ask me that during lunch or dinner. <laughs> and then I have to kind of modify my response a little bit so they don't lose their appetite. But fast forward up to... 2015 or 2016, I was looking for more than a dietary pattern, but kind of a way of life that was pro-health, pro-animal, 
and pro planet. And as we both know, uh, veganism checks all those boxes, right? Yeah. So the kind of customary thing for me is when I find something I love, I go all in. Like I had this just voracious appetite. I read everything I could find. I watched all the podcasts. I watched the documentaries. I uh, joined the American College of Lifestyle, Me Lifestyle Medicine. And that was the first place, honestly, Maxim, that I felt like I found my tribe, so to speak. Fit vegan mm -hmm. is the other. But I mean, I got the certifications through E. Cornell and Wellness Forum Health. But I'll tell you, it, there's a little bit of a difference between reading it academically and seeing it play out in real life. Yes. And I don't know if you ever had the pleasure of meeting a man named Dr. Hans Diehl. It's spelled D-I-E-H-L. No, well, I haven't yet. Well, sadly, he passed away about a year ago, but he's the founder of the CHIP program. And CHIP is an acronym. It st stands for Complete Health Improvement Program. And one of my friends, Cheryl, she's a physician, double boarded in family practice and lifestyle medicine. She and I became CHIP facilitators. So pre-pandemically, we had this CHIP class. And isn't it funny how our life is now kind of divided pre-pandemic and post-pandemic, right? But yeah, we yeah. had this Before, chip after Jesus is what, oh, is what exactly. happened. Oh, exactly. 100%. So this chip class, though, was a 12-week class, and we'd see the participants twice a week, and we'd talk all about the pillars of lifestyle medicine, whole food, plant-based eating, exercise, sleep hygiene, um, having a support system, all the things. But the difference was, in this program, we did blood metrics. So before the program and after the program, we checked people's lipid panel, their fasting blood glucose, and then their hemoglobin A1C, which is, for those of people who may not know, it's a marker of kind of the average blood sugar over three months. And I'm telling you, Maxim, had those lab reports not been faxed to me, I wouldn't have believed that such an appreciable change could happen in 12 weeks. And now we know it happens even quicker, right? But then I was all in, all in. And so then I started doing a fair amount of lecturing and community-based lectures, you know, between the relationship between food and chronic disease. Well, fast forward one more time, about five months ago, you started appearing in all my spheres and orbs. It was like Chef AJ, Chuck Carroll, you know, like Dr. Marbus. And I was like, who is this? And so I did kind of a deeper dive into you and Fit Vegan. And that sounds a little creepier <laughs> than I mean it to sound. But that's all right. I, I, Everyone I, did at one point. <laughs> but, you know, the, the words fit and vegan, especially when you join them together, I'm like, OK, you know. And so I, Maxim, loved everything I saw. I mean, just your heartwarming story of why you started this, which made me cry, honestly, and just how you and Ivy arrange your lives with your digital detox and your generosity to cancer patients. I was like man, this is something that I could get behind. Well, about a week after that, my husband came home one night and I said to him, I tried my best to explain fit vegan to him from someone who wasn't in the program yet, but I told him, I think I'm going to do this thing. And he was like, okay, what? And I, I told him and he said, well, number one, kudos to you for finally spending money on yourself. And what he meant yeah. was in, in contrast to the plethora of Amazon boxes that came for my grandbabies, right? But yeah. then he said, and this was a sobering question. He said, I have to ask you a question. He said, why would we pay for somebody to do the very things that are in your areas of expertise? Now, let me first throw out the disclaimer. Expert is way too big of a word for what I am, right? I mean, a hobbyist may be an expert. No, but bless his little heart for thinking that. But that did spur a thought process like, why would I do this? And you know, Maxim, in retrospect, the, I have the answer. And it is Fit Vegan has eliminated my decision fatigue. Like I, you know, before, I, I mean, like I'd wander in my kitchen and I always eat my overnight oats. Like that's just sacred, right? But yeah. for lunch and dinner, I'd be like, oh, what am I going to have? And I know what I want to eat, Maxim, and I know what I don't want to eat. And I could spend hours, you and I, talking about lycopene and anthocyanins and IGF-1 and TMAO and gut microbiome, but that still didn't mean I was doing it, right? And then I realized I'd go to the gym and I was a wanderer. 
I was like, what in the world? Like I do maybe some crunches, get on the elliptical, maybe do a couple lat pull downs, but it wasn't focused, you know? Yeah. And so now I take my fit vegan app into the gym. I do what you tell me to do. I come home and I walk over to my refrigerator and I look at my weekly meal plan, which is, <laughs> it's taped to my refrigerator because I'm classy like that, right? Nice. And I eat what you tell me to eat. So there goes my decision fatigue. I mean, is it just that simple? Really? Yeah, it's just that simple. And so I don't know, you know, as I started to get some results, people would say to me, okay, like, what are you doing? And I was like, I'm following the program. And everybody wants the secret sauce or the hack, right? And they're yeah. like, no, really, yeah, but what are you doing? I'm like, I'm following the program. Yeah. And, you know, and, and I don't know, Maxim, I don't know what keeps us from doing things sometimes, but maybe this is, this will resonate a bit with some of your audience. I think there's two camps of people and both camps say, I can do this on my own. And one camp, they do. And God bless you. You do you, boo. Good job. Right? Yeah. But then there's the other camp that I was in where I was like, I can do this. But I didn't. You know, in the old axiom, if nothing changes, nothing changes. And wasn't it like, I don't know, Einstein that says the definition of insanity is to continue to do the same thing and expect a different result, right? Yeah. So I was just like, you know, I realized that I was kind of floundering and I was like, okay, white flag, help a sister out here. Like we're going to do something. And it has been one of the best decisions that I have made to date. Yeah. Well, you look, you look super fit. Like I said, those, those photos that you sent me, I was like, God damn, that's a great transformation. Um, <laughs> well, thank you. And if you're comfortable, do you mind yeah. kind of sharing your age for the, for the listeners? Oh, I'm comfortable. I'll in September. So next month I'll be 64. I appreciate you sharing that because a lot of people come in and they're like, oh, I'm, I'm 45, I'm 50, I'm 50. I don't know if I like, I can lose weight anymore. I don't think my body will do it. And look at you, just phenomenal transformation. And you're just absolutely crushing it. And I love what you said because everyone's looking for the secret sauce. Everyone's looking for the shortcut. And when you tell them that you're just like doing the work and trusting the process, they'd be like, but there has to, are you taking like a fat burner in the back end? Is yeah. there like an Ozempic, you know, syringe somewhere? Like, <laughs> it's like, no, exactly. I'm just eating the food and working out and doing the thing. And it's like, no, I can't be just that. <laughs> but it is, right? Yeah. And, you know, I appreciate your honesty as well, because a lot of people that are considered, you know, health experts or connoisseurs that are kind of in that space, spend a lot of time, you know, reading studies, listening to podcasts, doing eCornell, kind of, you know, going to the ACL, ACLM conferences. It's like, I know all this stuff. I should be able to do all this stuff. And I don't think they understand the power of, like you mentioned, decision fatigue, which also like outsourcing, Absolutely. right? Like, this is literally what I do for a living. I don't take care of my own training and nutrition. I outsource it because just like you and everybody else listening, I'm human. If I did a little bit more exercise, I'm like, eh, you know, that little vegan cookie, I can kind of have it. If I, you know, I, I work hard today, like I'm human too. So I yeah. just need to delegate it and do what I'm told and then just shush. <laughs> and exactly. it works great. <laughs> exactly. And you know, it's not, you know, maybe it's our pride, Maxim, I don't know, but it's not a sign of weakness to hire a coach. It's a sign of wisdom, right? We all, all successful have our blind people. spots, right? We all have our blind spots and we don't correct them. Why? Because there are blind spots. And I think yeah. that's the role of a coach too. I I had two huge blind spots coming into the program and patient coach Sarah, she just <laughs> walked me right through them. It was great. So we all need a little help along the way, don't we? Yeah, absolutely. I, I remember I did a course a long time ago and it said, you know what you know, you know what you don't know, right? So I know what I know. I know how to transform people. I know that I don't know how to fly a helicopter. And then there's like a, a massive section. If you look at like a pie chart, there's a massive section of like, I don't know what I don't know. I Amen. can't even tell you what that is. I don't even know what I don't know. Exactly. And that's where like where a lot of people fall into. And so I'm curious as to what you, you seem like a big action taker, right? I can tell by your mindset of like who you are before and kind of the actions and how deep mm -hmm. you dove into this world that you're very action oriented. So was there any hesitancy to kind of step 
into the program and to do this again the variable is that it's online right because a lot of people work with trainers in person so this is this was a little bit different was there any hesitancy into stepping into that you know there really wasn't maxim but i would like to address the whole online thing you know even though it's online I've heard other people say this before too. It doesn't feel online. I mean, you guys yeah. have created this truly this tribe. And, you know, like if your schedule allows like four nights a week, you could almost go on a, on a, um, scheduling a call, call with a coach. And, yeah. you know, the thing is, and I don't want to, I praise God, I've never had a substance abuse problem. And so I, I'd have no personal experience with AA or NA or anything. But a lot of times when people join that, the the impetus is stay in the right mindset, right? So they go to yeah. re the meetings weekly, if or nightly, if not twice a day, because you know there's this old adage that you steer where you stare, right? And if you're filling your mind with good things, you're more apt to stay on the path. So even though it is considered, you know, virtual, well, it is. I mean, you're in California, I'm in Iowa. Are you jealous? Said no one ever. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Sarah's in British Columbia or wherever Sarah is. So it's got to be virtual. But you guys have masterfully created this. I don't know how you've done it, but it doesn't seem virtual. The other thing is we have access to you guys on our Fit Vegan app. Like if I have a question, I can type it into Sarah and get a response back quickly. I mean, that's happy clappy for me. I don't know about you yeah. guys. Probably get a lot of messages. But it. I feel like I always have this umbilical cord. And unlike a trainer in a gym, I mean, you see him once a week, twice a week, but then your contact is over. And this is yeah. a completely different setup, completely different. Yeah, I appreciate you sharing that because it's definitely been tweaked over the course of the past like four plus years of us doing this. It wasn't as nice <laughs> when I first started as to what it is today. You know, that feedback form that I sent to everyone that I made anonymous, that was really helpful because I started to change a bunch of things. I don't know if you guys kind of notice how I've, or I trying to implement this fast as possible. But yeah, honestly, just through you guys' feedback oh, is how neat. we make that happen. And, uh, you know, we're trying to do more workshop in person as well. But yeah, the group calls are just a beautiful place to connect with other people because <laughs> Like, I don't know if where you live, you have a big vegan community around you, but most people don't, right? They're kind oh. of the only oddball in the family or in their community. And they're like, everyone thinks I'm nuts. And then I jump on a group call and everyone's just like me. <laughs> we don't even have a Whole Foods, Maxim. Jeez. What? Uh, I can't. I would never be able to go. <laughs> <laughs> I have a Whole Foods. Everywhere I live, there's like a Whole Foods 10, 15 oh. minutes away from my house. There's even an Air One, uh. I think like. 20 minutes away. Have you ever been to Air One before? I have not, but I've heard somebody else on your podcast mention that I'm jealous. Yeah, Air One is like, it's 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 the bougiest grocery store you can go to. <laughs> you, you'll you buy cold pressed juice and it'll be like 20 bucks. Um, you'll come out with a meal and it'll be 30 bucks for like a to-go <laughs> meal. It's very bougie. That's where all the celebrities go. Um, so come and check it out if you're now like, we'll spend a bunch of money on like a meal. <laughs> um. So we'd love to ask you, obviously you got a great transformation and you're down 15 pounds so far, like massive shift in body composition. You can clearly tell that you've put on lean muscle, that you've dropped body fat. Was there any moments throughout your journey where you had obstacles that you had to overcome? And if so, how did you overcome them? Well, um, I would say the first biggest obstacle was having my tofu measured in kilograms. <laughs> in grams. I'm like, wait. <laughs> I'm from Iowa. It's out. No, I'm just kidding. But yeah. honestly, my biggest hurdle, and this is going to sound super simplistic, but it's cooking. I hate to cook, Maxim. I would rather stick bamboo shoots under my fingernails than cook. Like, I'll do dishes till Christ comes again, but don't ask me to cook. So I I waited, though, for like Brittany or, or Chef AJ to teleport into my kitchen and say, please let me cook for you. But since that didn't happen, I just had to put on my big girl panties and do it. But you guys have even made that easy because every month I get two different meal plans. One of them, I cook less, but I eat more repetitively. And the other one, I cook more, but I eat greater variety. So, and now I kind of got it down to a science. Like you guys yeah. made it easy, like cook quinoa according to the package while quinoa is cooking, you know? So I'm like, okay, I can read, I can do this. <laughs> and it's been fine. It's been fine. 
Yeah, yeah that's, you don't have to be a master chef. That's the important no. part. No, and I will say, credit where credit's due. I know how lucky I am with this, but my husband is my sous chef. Like he'll cut up all the produce and de-head my cauliflower or florida or whatever it's called. And he makes a mean tofu in the air fryer. So props nice. to my husband. Nice. It's always helpful to have a partner that's supportive. I think oh, a lot of people, oh, for sure. yeah. I think a lot of people wish they had that. And I've spoken to a lot of people on these, on these episodes for fit vegan success stories. And a lot of the time they have a partner that's been supportive in the, in the back end. Yeah. And so how did you, is your partner vegan? <laughs> no. Um, oh. I'll, I'll give you the little backdrop to that. I, I should say when we're around the house, he basically eats what I eat. He does a great job. When we yeah. go out, though, he may have a burger or a chicken dish or whatever. But, you know, Maxim, for me, one of the struggles I had, and I think this is human nature, when you find something you love, you just want to shout it from the rooftops, right? Like I'm the yeah. shameless evangelist for whole food, plant-based eating in Jesus, and not necessarily in that order. But you just want to share it with your friends and your family. So I felt like for so long, I was pulling them or trying to pull them along, maybe kicking and screaming if the truth were known. But my arms got tired from pulling, you know, yeah. and then... I saw this just this little phrase. I don't know if I read it or heard it. It's certainly not original, but it was just it just said be a lighthouse, not a tugboat. Okay. Yeah. And so so that was like an epiphany. It was like the Griswold family Christmas tree for me. It was like, you know, right there. I was just like, there it is. Like all I have to do is do me. I spend zero bandwidth worrying about what other people think of my habits or my lifestyle. I'm like, talk to the hand. I don't, I just do me. And yeah. I just try to be the lighthouse. And gradually, a lot of them have kind of come on board. So that's an exciting thing because you want to share what's important to you and what's made a difference in your own life, right? Yeah, for sure. I, I, it's, that's, I, I'm happy you brought that up because that's been my whole philosophy. Uh, I've been vegan for going on 10 years this year. And yeah. I think everyone, when they transition and they kind of learn the truth about nutrition and veganism and whole food plan base, they become an evangelist, right? They're going to go around and talk to everyone about it. They want to share, they want to bring everyone into like their, their great new realization that they've had. And everyone goes through that phase and everyone gets tired of it at one point because it's like, a, it, it's hard to go to someone and be like, you're wrong about the way you've been eating. And I discovered this new way. And it's right. It's very confronting for other people. And so they're never, ever receptive. And so what I realized is kind of the same thing as you is like, if I get in shape, if I do incredible things as a vegan and as a fit vegan, then people are going to ask questions. And so when I did my fat loss phase, got a six pack, did Ironman and all of these things, all of a sudden, hundreds and hundreds of questions started coming in. And I was like, I've been waiting for this the whole time that I've been preaching. <laughs> Not that yeah. I don't preach. <laughs> the questions yeah. are coming. Yeah. So your people seeing you in your community transform the way that you did. Everyone love. Everyone is attracted to greatness. So the fact that you transform, everyone's going to be like, what is Beth doing? Why does she look so great? Why does she have so much energy? Why does she lose so much weight? And then they're way more receptive and the door is wide open for you to be like, I've just been, you know, eating this way and kind of yeah. moving my body. Do you find yeah. that people have been more receptive since they saw your transformation? Absolutely. And I would say another thing is, you know, I mean, there's always going to be those people like hate are going to hate. Right. But yeah. there is uh, some people who will give you a ration of poo for what you do or ha ha ha, where, where do you get your protein? Blah, blah, blah. So we've never heard that one before. Right. But yeah. then, then sadly, when they go to the doctor and they get some aberrant blood findings or a test result, then they're coming back and they're like, so tell me a little bit more about that, you know? And typically, yeah. I mean, I am willing to, what little I know, I'm willing to share and help people as much as I possibly can. But now I've gotten to the point where I'm like, okay, go watch Forks Over Knife, Game Changer, and What the Health. And then after you've done that, come back and we'll chat because they got to have a little skin in the game too. Like I'm willing to do it, but why would they listen to me if they don't take the time to even do that, right? So I'm willing yeah. to help, but it's all happy clappy until a test result comes back aberrant or bad. And then it's like, oh, okay. You know, and I don't wish that on anybody, Lord knows, but sometimes that's a no pun intended game changer, right? So 
Yeah, yeah, people, most people change out of pain. Rarely people are like, oh, this seems so pleasurable. Let me work super hard to gain more pleasure than what I have right now. It's like, <laughs> wow, this is really painful. I need to get out of here. And usually it's that diagnosis. It's the blood work. It's, you know, not fitting in a pair of pants or outfit that you like or your partner, you know, you know, poking your stomach and making fun at you, whatever it may be. Um, yeah, I, I think I think that's so powerful. Like, I love wearing my I wear my Fit Vegan Athlete shirt at the gym every day and i'm on the skinnier side and i'm six four i'm like 185 pounds i'm on the skinnier side but we talked about basketball before we started recording like when i start dunking on people and they're like god damn this guy is vegan there's like wait <laughs> wait what what are you why are you so athletic like what's happening and so yeah just just leading with greatness leading with kindness gets people to kind of be more open to it and you never know if you're the one planting the seed for people or watering the seed absolutely and so yeah just always being kind doing your thing by default you're either watering it or you're planting it for people yes preach yes yeah so love to ask you um as a as a oh, sorry, i'll go back to your husband actually so i asked if he was vegan so he's not he's vegan around the house which is why i love working with women because don't want to be stereotypical but a lot of time the husband's too lazy to cook and so if I work with the woman, then the household is impacted and then kind of eating more plant based. But how, how did you enroll your husband into being supportive of this journey that you were on of like exercising, wanting to improve your body composition and eating whole food plant based? Because it's a, that's a that's a big shift in the household for a lot of people. Yeah. Well, he is just naturally supportive on whatever I come up with. And he is a thinker, right? So he had two parents die of colon cancer. So mm. I've made the big, you know, because for me, Maxim, I mean, looking better in my clothes, feeling better, transforming more, that's all great. But it always comes back to health, you know, and we know, thankfully, yeah. a lot of times it's almost linear. As you decrease your body fat and your visceral, visceral fat, your blood metrics improve, your, you know, your blood sugars improve. And as you lose weight, your hypertension decreases a lot of times or your lipid panel improves. So I just made a very strong case to him about, look, colon cancer is one of those areas where I, I don't want to say it's linear, but it's very correlative, you know? And so he is just sadly for him, I guess, been exposed to me and my rhetoric daily. And, and he sees the wisdom in it. And about Mm, five months ago, I started making him a shake in the morning and it sort of goes along. Are you familiar with or heard the name Brooke Goldner? Is that a doctor? Yeah, she's a doctor and she wrote the book Goodbye Lupus. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's where I heard of her. Yeah. yeah well, she, she, she had has a this tragic thing thing. happen to her. She had a tragic thing happen to her lately. Right? Yeah. Her son died. Her 10 year old yeah, okay. son died. It was awful. But yeah. she is a big proponent of hypernourishing, where we take our Vitamix and we put 75% greens in, we put flax seeds, and then just enough fruit to kind of flavor it. And he drinks that through the day, really. And honestly, he has an autoimmune disease we were trying to reverse. <clears throat> yeah. And so um, when he was on steroids, he's 6'2", so he's not as tall as you are, but he, with the steroid help, he got up to like 275. He was just miserable. Well, then he got off the steroids and that helped. But since we've been doing the hyper nourishing smoothies, um, his autoimmune disease has improved. And, and again, I don't want to make this sound linear. Or, you know, I'm not a doctor, but now when he last stood on the scale, he weighs 216. So nice. that is a huge motivator for him to keep it because I think before his gut microbiome was like, what's fiber? <laughs> what are yeah. prebiotics? Because he ate such a poor diet. And now that he's really feeding his good gut bacteria, like, it has really turned things around. So it was it was a little bit about what I said, but it was the practicality of the systems we put in place that has really kind of sealed the deal for him, I think. Yeah, and that's a, the big difference of like having one partner make that decision for themselves and having that indirect impact for the other partner because they're around it by default now. Absolutely. Yeah. Yep. So I'm curious as to what were some of the tools that you that were the most helpful for you throughout the program to kind of get you to have this incredible transformation? Well, I will tell you two of them. And this is like embarrassing to admit. But so even prior to Fit Vegan, I would use my fitness pal 
and track my what I ate. And I know we don't have to. It's low calorie density, blah, blah, blah. But I will tell you, like, I like metrics. Sometimes I'm like death by metrics, my withing scale, my Garmin. And I just yeah. personally like the feedback, right? But honest to God, Maxim, like, I would look at the end of the day and I was like, Oh my God. Like I routinely had north of 65 grams of fiber, yet yeah. I was hungry all the time. And my friend's like, girl, I think you've got a tapeworm because how can you eat that much and still be hungry? And I'm like, I don't know. So then I went on my onboarding call with sweet coach Sarah and she said, no, oh, this is kind of comical. She said, the word protein macro. And I'm instantly, I'm like, mm, isn't that a little reductionistic? I mean, isn't that the whole point? We don't have to have macro, blah, blah. I think by the end of our dialogue, it was probably like hearing Charlie Brown's teacher, like wah, wah, wah. And Sarah yeah. just said to me, she's like, Beth, we've had a lot of people in this same place. And we find that if we focus on the food and make it kind of protein centric, then there's a lot greater satiety. And I'm like, Okay, I'm just going to trust the program, right? Oh, Max, I'm, like that was worth the price of admission. Like I now, I mean, let's be honest, I eat what you tell me to eat right now. But at some point, yeah. I'm going to have to do it on my own. And just focusing, and it's not some crazy amount of protein, but focusing on my protein, I am so much more sated than I was. Yeah. So, so much more. And she was right. So again, trust the program, right? Yeah, And I think on the flip side of that, the other part was in the gym. Like I've run two marathons and di done a sprint try. And um, so my world, like a lot of your guests I hear, is kind, it was kind of aerobic stuff, right? Yeah. And one of my favorite fitness gurus, present company excluded, was a guy named Bill Phillips. He wrote the book Body for Life. And he had in the 90s, I think, this documentary body of work. So he's a big strength trainer guy too and his whole contention was if you look like a pear and all you do is cardio you're going to lose weight you're just going to look like a smaller pear right yeah. and that's what you preach all the time is body recomposition so instead of this crazy amount of cardio and and honestly my disclaimer though is the gym is my happy place, Maxim. I love the gym. Now, I know for some people it's like bloodletting, right? But it is my happy place. But now my schedule is I do four days a week strength training, two upper body, two lower body, and then two cardio. And that has been a, a game changer, absolutely a game changer, because I was just spinning my wheels. I mean, I was just in a rut. And, you know, and like cardio was part of it. And, and, you know, and as they say, the difference between a rut and a grave is just the depth of the hole, right? And so I was just in this cardio rut. And now, oh, man, is that made all the difference in the world right there. So those were two huge things that I changed by being in the program and led to really a lot of efficacy and the outcome. So, yeah. Now, I just got to point out, you have you have great analogies. You have great, great <laughs> sayings and great quotes. <laughs> they just I'm make me smile every time you right pop now. up a new one. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, perfect. Lo love to ask you, like, what were some of the changes that you didn't expect to happen as you were as you were losing weight? Uh, I'll just I'll just share a fun one that I've heard before. Okay. I, I, we had a lady that was uh, you know, very, very much overweight. And she comes to me on the, on the podcast a long time ago. She's like, my showers are shorter. And I'm just realizing there's like new areas of my body that I couldn't reach before. I was like, well, that's one way to put it. So that's I'm curious hilarious. for you, like, what were some, uh, what were some changes that you weren't expecting besides uh, the number on the scale dropping? Sure. Well, a couple things were, um, it was like, I could see, you know, I, do my exercises typically if I can at the gym in front of a mirror, not for vanity reasons, quite the opposite, just make sure my form is good, right? And so yeah. at one point I was like, dang, middle deltoid, where have you been all my life, right? <laughs> and so I, I saw increased definition, but a real world example, and I double checked to make sure I was being accurate if I told you this, is usually we get our dog food delivered by Amazon, right? And it's this big old bag. And usually I just leave it for my husband to bring it in, honestly. But like last week, I was like, no, I got this. So I picked up the box and I brought it in. 
And I said to my husband, oh, couldn't you get the normal size of dog food? And he's like, yeah, that was the normal size of dog food. And I don't know if it's 40 or 45 pounds. I'm like, what? Like I effortlessly <laughs> brought that in. And I was like, wow, yay. So that was kind of, that was a big difference for sure. Yeah. Not funny how it shows up throughout your life in, in kind of different ways that you didn't yeah. expect. Um, yeah, honestly, the, the increase in strength is massive. Uh, when you start doing strength training, you do a lot less cardiovascular exercise. Exactly. Yeah. So we'd love to ask you, I think I know the answer to this one because you, you brought it up a few times of like trusting the program and trusting the, the process. Mm -hmm. But what are what are things that or kind of lessons or pieces of advice that you can pass off to people listening that are in the program and they're about to do the program mm -hmm. that, you know, made a difference for you that you think would really make a difference for them? Right. Well, as you said, trust a program. That's number one. Number two is show up for yourself, like show up for yourself like you'd show up for somebody else, right? And quit the excuses. I mean, your why, you got to know your why and your why has to be bigger than your excuses, right? And so sometimes I think we put ourselves in this subset category like, well, you know, she can do it because she's retired in contrast. And it's like, hold it. Like there was a time where I worked full time outside the home. I had two children and I still got an MBA and a doctorate and I still took good. I was a good steward of my body. Now, granted, I wasn't in fit vegan, but I was doing a lot of the things. Right. And, yeah. you know, when I do community lectures, I have this. It's supposed to be funny, but this slide in there of excuses. And it's you've I'm sure seen it. It's a cartoon of a doctor speaking to a patient. And he just says, it's not that diabetes runs in your family it's that nobody runs in your family you know yeah, and so we one. have we have these excuses like well my family has da, da 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 and then we look at epigenetics and and your you know your genetics doesn't have to be your destiny but that's a whole nother talk but i think the thing is like the other thing is maxim i'm going to be 64 you're never too old to hop on the program. And I was telling somebody the other day, and again, death, death by analogy, right? But if you've ever been to like um, O'Hare or some of the major airport hubs, they have those running, those walking automated walkways, right? Yeah. And it was like Fit Vegan is that automated walkway. Like they build it, they have the motor, they have the structure. All you have to do is get on and then walk yeah. with it, right? But get on it. And, you know, sometimes I think we say, well, I'm just too old or whatever. Well, you know, it doesn't get any easier, Maxim. I mean, we lose sarcomeres as we age. You know, we lose muscle mass. So it's not going to be better. And if we wait for the perfect time, it's like having children. Like if you wait for the perfect time to join, you're just you're just not going to do it. So my yeah. advice would be, you know, find your why and then actualize it. Take that step. And yeah, it's scary sometimes because... You don't know what you don't know, right? But I just wish I could teleport the people who are on the fence to 12 weeks from now, knowing what I know. And then they can look back and go, wow, I didn't know how unwell I felt from a physical, psychological, spiritual vantage point. We don't know what we don't know. But looking in the rearview mirror, man, I just wish I could take the people with me so they'd know, you know, they'd know later. You know, yeah. and your health is worth it. You're worth investing in. Self care isn't selfish, right? You you want to invest in yourself for sure. Yeah, yeah absolutely. I that's how I see it. It I think it's selfish for you not to take care of yourself, right? Because again, or just kind of do a stretch of imagination here. But let's just say that you didn't take care of yourself and you got sick in ten years from now. Well because you were you know, trying to prioritize more time with your kids, your parents, and you were saying yes to everyone and saying no to yourself. Well, in 10 years from now, guess who has to take care of you? All the people you love. All That's the people right. you love have to see you suffer. And yeah. they want to be able to heal you, and they can't. And again, I've been in that position, and it sucks. You don't want to be yeah. in a position where you see someone you love suffer. Mm -hmm. And so you not trying to lose weight, not trying to be healthy, like it's selfish because you're going to potentially put the people that you love in that position where they feel helpless. That's and they right. can't save you. That's right. And we live in a weird, humans are odd. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm trying to figure out if I can have one superpower to make that flip switch in people's head yeah. to be like, hey, per, like, let's just imagine you got the cancer diagnosis without getting it. Like, how would you act? 
what right. would you change in your life? Absolutely. You know, and I think sometimes it can be a fear of failure too. Like, well, if I do this, what if I don't succeed? And again, it comes Cancer back to scarier trust. than failure. <laughs> right. Oh, yeah. amen to that, you know, but you, I mean, you, you've got to trust the process. I mean, I don't turn over control easy. Like I say, ask God for reverence on that one, but, but, you know, you trust the experts who can, who can guide you, who can take you along your journey. And, you know, ultimately, Maxim, as we both know, I mean, I love your little mission statement, but ultimately it's about health. And thankfully, like I said, it tracks linear a lot of times with loss of fat. But, you know, you have that great visual behind you of that. I think it's a five pound um, oh, that yeah, five right pound fat thing. Yeah. And at first you look at it and you go, Ew, like that was on my body, right? And that yeah, is you lost a great three vision. of those. What? You yeah. lost three of those. That's crazy. How so people that? listening on audio on YouTube, I have a five pound of fat on my hand. Yeah. <laughs> but you know, if we take that one step further, that looks like a big inert blob, right? But fat is yeah. metabolically active tissue. It excretes estrogen. And so, you know, especially for your listeners who may have a history of uh, reproductive cancers for women, breast, ovarian uterine and men, uh, prostate and testicular, typically, and I'm not a physician, so I'm not saying that from that vantage point, but fat and ergo, you know, estrogen is not your friend. So you invest in yourself in this program, you lose fat, not only do you feel better physically and mentally, but also you're waging war against chronic disease. And you're giving, yeah. I mean, we don't know, none of us know what tomorrow's going to bring, right? But you're giving yourself the best possible chance that you can to live a healthy life. Like Dr. Back to Dr. Deal. He used to say, the goal is to die young as late as possible. Right. Yeah. And you got to think about that for a minute, but it's like, yeah, I mean, 20 years from now, I want to be in my own home, right? I don't want to be, God bless healthcare workers and God bless extended care facilities, but I don't want to ring a bell for someone to take me to the bathroom. Right. I want to, I want yeah. to be vibrant as long as I can. So that takes people investing in themselves. Just take the risk. Just just be the Nike commercial and just do it, right? Yeah. Well, I think you can never lose in investing in yourself, right? It's, it's a different ballgame if you're doing like the stock market and different, depending on what you're investing in. Right now, it's a little bit of a shit show. I lost yeah. some money, but <laughs> right, a little yeah. bit of a shit show right now. But in your health, you can never lose because at the end of the day, you've learned a lot. Right. Again, you had a lot of knowledge before, but you learned a lot of new things that you'll be able to bring forward with you. Not, not whatever happens to you, whatever happens to your house, your life, whatever, maybe that knowledge is going to stay with you forever. And that's mm -hmm. going to be something that's going to be very helpful, especially as you move into your 70s and your 80s, because we have members that are in their 70s and their 80s and they're noticing the difference at resistance training. Uh, and how it affects their body and having, you know, putting a bigger emphasis on plant based protein throughout the day. They're noticing well, a difference in their bone density. I love that. Just love that. That that fuels my fire, Max. I love that. Yeah. No, well, I, I honestly, I really appreciate you taking the time to jump on. And I want to kind of leave an open floor if there's anything that you wanted to share that I didn't ask you that was on your heart to share for people listening um, or just for me or Coach Sarah, whatever it may be. I'm just leaving you an open, an open floor. Um, probably the last thing I'd like to say is I know Dr. Marbus is like an adjunct of part of your program. And Dr. Marbus was my doctor a couple years ago. And then she got into more administrative things at, I think it was plant-based telehealth. So yeah. I was, I am now working with Dr. Christine Miller at Love Life Telehealth, who is one of the, um, oh, she is wonderful. Both Dr. Marbus and Dr. Miller are wonderful. And it was important to me to find a physician that I agreed with philosophically and I didn't have to always defend my position of what I ate or what I didn't eat or, um, and, you know, lifestyle medicine physicians are regular doctors, right? They just have, yeah. they come at it from a lifestyle, lifestyle medicine perspective. But if that doesn't get you where they want you to be or where you want to be, they can actually prescribe medications. And like I said earlier, if you can measure it, you can usually manage it. So I would think that Dr. Marbus or similar uh, plant-based physician would be a great adjunct if you decide to do this, because then you can see in black and white how all your efforts have translated over to improve improvements in your blood markers. I think, at least for me, I kind of geek out on stuff like that, and maybe others don't, but I think that's 
a huge to see what's going on under the hood, right? I think that's super valuable. Yeah, that's that's my last suggestion. Yeah, no, that's great. No, I did in a day like one thing I learned from being in the cancer world and spending an ungodly amount of money on cancer treatments back in the day is, you know, you read something and you're like, well, this is good to fight cancer. So we're just going to, you know, pump thousands of dollars in that direction. And then we did that, those treatments for my late partner. And then we do, we figure out a new test and we do a test and it ends up that she had like a genome of some sort that all the treatments that I was spending thousands of dollars on were actually hurting her and were actually having a negative effect. And I was like, oh shit, like, and the tests were expensive at, at, at the time. And so I was like, well, we didn't, we cheaped out on the test and we did the treatment and actually you should have been the opposite. And so getting the test first, looking at the data first, and then from there being able to make adjustments allows you to make that much more powerful adjustment towards things that actually help you versus hurt you. I know that if ever I get sick, first thing I'm doing as I'm doing all the round of tests to figure out everything I need to know at the base and then kind of make decisions from there. And I think people will read, you know, I, as much as I love all those podcasts, I'll listen to Andrew Ber uh, Uberman, Simon Hill, and I'll be like, higher doses of this are really good. And people just start doing it. I was like, you don't even know if you're deficient in those things. You don't even know if you have too much of those, if your body oh, can absorb exactly. it properly. It's just yeah. people are just kind of taking things left and right in the hope that it'll like a, like a patch solution that it's going right. to work. But yeah, test. And then you get much, you have a much better picture of like where you're supposed to head from there. And so I'm happy that arms. you're. Yeah. And link arms with somebody who knows that stuff. I mean, Dr. Marbus did a lot of blood work on me and we found a couple things. It's like, oh, you know, it's, it's eye opening. And if I would have been left to my own vices, I, I don't think that I would have, uh, I know I wouldn't have arrived at that. So it's nice yeah. to have somebody like that in your court, right? Yeah, for sure. Oh, I, I just did blood work with uh, Lori like a few months ago and it's the same thing, right? I've, I was fine, but you can kind of, you can see like, there's no way for me to know if my, if my B12 levels are lower, my iron is low, whatever. I can't just meditate my way to knowing if I'm in a deficit or not. Like you need data for this stuff, right? Amen. There's, yes. I love, I love the whole feeling movement and like, you know, <laughs> trusting your gut, but you can't know if you're deficient in a vitamin through like That's right. meditation. <laughs> You cannot. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. So, uh, Beth, just last question. Was it worth your investment to jump in, in the program? Oh, man. Maxim, if I could shout this from the rooftops of all the decisions I've made in life, you know, Jesus and having kids and all the things. I mean, Fit Vegan is right up there. I mean, I have not looked back. It's been I mean, I just feel so much better to be actionably doing something that leads to results, you know, rather than just wandering, right? So it is 1000% worth it. So I thank you so much for what you you guys have been doing to help people help wanderers like me. So well, I appreciate you, you know, being willing to invest in yourself, commit the time to yourself and for you to do the work. Because you did your own squats, you did your own <laughs> cooking, right? Like I, I wasn't at your house doing squats for you and cooking the food right. for you. You did all the hard work. And so you and your husband, the great, yes, great teamwork right. on well, that. I told, I told Coach Sarah, if you think I'm quitting before you reverse diet me and I get more calories, you're crazy. <laughs> I mean, yeah. you're going to have to kick me out because bring that on. So Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Close. That's going to be such a great time to reverse <laughs> diet. Like the increase in strength and energy you get from it is phenomenal. I'm you're excited. Gonna, yeah, yeah, you're going to have a great time. Um, <laughs> perfect. Well, Beth, thank you very much for taking the time to jump on the show. Everyone listening, thank you for tuning in. Again, if you're interested in working with us, there's a link down below where you can book your application call. So go and book that. Again, the call is absolutely free. We just want to make sure that we can work with you um, and that we can actually guarantee our results because if we can't help you and you, some of you are like really sick and you need to go see a doctor and <laughs> not, you know, not working out. Some people are not in that position. So that's why we have these calls just to make sure that we can serve you to the highest, uh, our highest capacity. And so thank you everyone for listening and we'll see you in the next episode. Bye. Bye.